So let, let me take you back to your, your own childhood. And, and I am really interested in the extent to which your, your father's relationship with you informed the kind of philosopher that you have become. <laughs> yeah. He clearly doted on you, you adored each other, but he was also a man of his time, born in 1901. He was sexist, he was anti-Semitic, he was racist. Actually, and not sexist, interestingly oh, enough. Really? He always okay. said to me, his law Excellent. firm... His law firm <laughs> Redeeming need, features. No, his law firm <laughs> needed more women. No, but that was important because he really did encourage my high aspirations. And, but um, no, he Didn't grew necessarily up, want he them grew for your up mother. in the deep south. <laughs> And he was a racist of the sort that was characteristic of the early 20th century in the Deep South, but we were living in the North. Um, you know, we had fierce arguments, but he was also a man of reason. And so what I saw was this discrepancy between this extremely educated and successful lawyer who was a believer in reason and science and so on, and then these primitive attitudes about race, which were ridiculous. And so, of course, we had ferocious arguments about race, about Judaism, and so forth. Um, but it was, uh, it was something that it taught me something about the need to, un to dig deeper and understand people's emotions. I think a lot of the work I've done subsequently on disgust and stigma has come out of that experience. People don't, I mean, they're, they're, their emotions are not irrational if that means they don't contain thought, but they contain thoughts of a very peculiar, rigid sort. And if you grow up with them and they become habitual in you, then yes, people who are perfectly reasonable in other areas will actually believe that if they drink from a glass that an African-American has drunk from, they will be contaminated in some way. So I've tried to understand that emotion all my career about how it figures in discrimination against gays and lesbians, against uh, even people who are aging. More recently, I've been working on the role of disgust in age discrimination, which I think is very, very large.